हेलो टू ऑल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द टर्ग प्रेशर एंड द वॉल प्रेशर व्हिच आर इन शॉर्ट आल्सो कॉल्ड एज द टीपी एंड द डब्ल्यू पी दीज टू कॉन्सेप्ट आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू स्टडी द अदर फिजियोलॉजिकल कॉन्सेप्ट सच एज द डीपीडी एंड द वॉटर पोटेंशियल वेन वी स्टडी द डिफ्यूजन प्रेशर डेपिसेट दैट इज द डीपीडी एंड द वॉटर पोटेंशियल डब्ल्यू then in that cases we have to use the tp wp and op concepts okay now to study the turgor pressure and the wall pressure imagine about a plant cell say for this is a plant cell we know very well that a plant cell is surrounded by a cell wall and below the cell wall plasma membrane is present and inside the plant cell a big vacuole is present a big vacuole is present and inside the vacuole vacuolar sap is present okay this is a plant cell okay now the vacuolar sap is always having the high op remember that the op of the vacuolar sap is always high and it is high in comparison to the pure water means when this plant cell will be capped in the pure water then the op osmotic pressure of the pure water will be low in comparison to the osmotic pressure of the cell sap and we have already studied that always the water moves from low op to high op this is the osmotic rule right always the water moves from low op to high op means what i want to say that when a plant cell will be capped in pure water then the water will be moving from outside to inside the cell okay now how tp is developed tp means turgor pressure before starting the turgor pressure you must know that what is a turgid cell or what do you mean by turgidity whenever the water enters inside the cell then the cell becomes swollen it become turgid and it is called as what the turgidity and whenever the water comes out of the cell the cell will become shrink and the shrink the cell will be called as the flaccid so in this video i will be using two terms one i will be using the turgid when the water will enter inside the cell and another i will be using the term flaccid when the water will come outside the cell okay so the cell will become shrinked okay it will become flaccid now see here that how tp is developed so when a cell when a plant cell when a plant cell is immersed in pure water then what will happen the water will enter inside the cell why because the op of the pure water is low and the op of the cell sap is high the rule says and suggests that always the water moves from low op to high op so definitely the water will enter inside the cell as soon as the water will enter inside the cell so the volume of the cytoplasm or we can say the protoplasm will increase and we know very well when the volume will increase this way the volume will be actually raising towards the outside okay so what happens due to the increase in the volume of the cytoplasm the cytoplasm impose a pressure on the wall of the plant cell so the pressure which is imposed by the cytoplasm on the wall is called as the turgor pressure means always the turgor pressure is imposed towards outside okay outside you can see in the diagram that you can see the arrows that cytoplasm is imposing the pressure on the wall of the plant cell and this is called as the turgor pressure but remember i have talked here about the plant cell and we know very well that plant cells are surrounded by a rigid cell wall so what happens that when the turgor pressure is imposed by the cytoplasm on the wall exactly at that time 
as the wall is rigid so the wall will be imposing the pressure wall will be imposing the pressure on the cytoplasm so when the wall is imposing the pressure on the cytoplasm then that pressure will be called as the wall pressure but you have to remember this thing that no doubt at all that the turgor pressure is always equal to the wall pressure but the tp and the wp are always working in opposite direction tp is imposed towards outside and wp is imposed from outside to inside so always remember the tp and wp are same tp is equal to wp but they are opposite tp is imposed outside and wp is imposed on the cytoplasm that is inside so we can say that the tp is balanced by always remember in a plant cell tp is balanced by an equal by an equal but a opposite pressure imposed by the rigid cell wall on the cytoplasm and that's why it is called as the wall pressure now one thing to be remembered here is that that wall pressure is only present in the plant cell in the animal cell as the wall is absent so the wall pressure will be absent and we can always say that tp is equal to wp in the case of the plant cell now one thing to be noted here is that the turgor pressure is not applicable for a free solution means what i want to say the turgor pressure is applicable only for a living cell i can also say that the turgor pressure is applicable only on a osmotic system but turgor pressure is not at all applicable for a free solution and the turgor pressure is also called as the turgor pressure is also called as the hydrostatic pressure okay now imagine about the two cells that what happens when the plant cell is kept in pure water and what happens when animal cell is kept in the pure water so plant cell when kept in the pure water it will never burst why because when the plant cell is placed in pure water so due to the wall pressure what happens the tp is balanced due to wall pressure we know very well plant cell is having the wall so the wall pressure will balance the turgor pressure so tp will become equal to wp and that's why the plant cell when immersed in the pure water it will never burst but just imagine about the animal cell we know that animal cell is not having the wall pressure so when animal cell will be kept in the pure water what will happen the water will enter into the animal cell and when water will enter into the animal cell the animal cell will become turgid and due to the turgidity a pressure will be developed that is known as the turgor pressure okay but to equalize to balance the turgor pressure wall pressure is absent so what will happen the turgor pressure will regularly increase in the cell and the time will come when the cell will first swell and ultimately it will burst say for i am quoting an example of the rbc imagine about the rbc rbc of human is a animal cell when rbc many times this question is asked in the various medical examination that what will happen when rbc is kept in distilled water so distilled water is 100% pure water so when the rbc will be kept in the pure water so what will happen tp will be developed because the water will enter then it will become turgid tp will be developed and due to the regular increase in the tp the rbc will swell and it will burst because it doesn't have the cell wall okay now few more points about the tp the tp of a flaccid cell just now i have talked about the flaccid cell what is a flaccid cell a cell from which the water has exited out a shrink the cell is called as the flaccid cell so tp of a flaccid cell is always zero tp of a flaccid cell is always zero and the highest value of the tp and the wp is found in a fully turgid cell means what i want to say that in a flaccid cell the tp is zero but in a fully turgid cell but in a fully turgid cell the value of tp and wp is highest 
and it is always equal to the osmotic pressure what i want to say in flaccid cell the tp is zero but in a fully turgid cell tp is maximum and it is equal to the osmotic pressure so in a fully turgid cell we can say that op is equal to tp op is equal to tp tp means turgor pressure and op means osmotic pressure so i am talking about what i am talking about the turgid cell in a turgid cell in a turgid cell op is equal to tp now one more thing that the value of tp is normally from zero to in between the osmotic pressure in a plant cell say for in we know very well that tp of a flaccid cell is zero and tp of tp of the turgid cell is highest and it is equal to op so what i want to say the value of tp is normally from zero to in between the osmotic pressure in plant cell means the value of tp is from zero to op it is in between the zero to the op in a plant cell just now i am strictly talking about the plant cell only okay now the value of tp is assumed as negative in a plasmolyzed cell always remember in a plasmolyzed cell in a plasmolyzed cell the value of tp is assumed to be negative why negative now first of all you must know that what is a plasmolyzed cell okay just now i am giving only the definition of the plasmolysis for the details you can view my next video which will be based on the plasmolysis also so what is plasmolysis now imagine here you have kept the cell in pure water when a plant cell is kept in pure water water enters in the cell but when a cell is kept in hypertonic solution highly concentrated solution the water comes out of the cell means the protoplasm gets shrinked and such a cell is called as a plasmolyzed cell so what i want to say that in a plasmolyzed cell the tp is negative this this question is asked in exams that tp is negative when so tp is negative when the cell is plasmolyzed not only this nowadays tp is also called as nowadays tp is also called as psi p means turgor pressure is also called as pressure potential psi p we denote the pressure potential by the sign psi p and always remember the psi p is positive psi p is having the positive value but always remember psi p is negative psi p is negative in a plasmolyzed plasmolyzed cell because just now i have said that in a plasmolyzed cell tp is negative in a plasmolyzed cell tp is negative now we are saying tp is also called as psi p so definitely psi p is positive but in the case of the plasmolyzed cell the psi p will also be negative now let's have a look on the significance of the turgor pressure significance of the turgor pressure that what is the significance of the turgor pressure significance now very first significance is that it maintains the normal shape of the cell it maintains the normal shape of the cell as we know very well that when a cell is kept in pure water water will enter inside the cell so what will happen the protoplasm is stuck to the wall and therefore the the shape of the cell will be maintained what i want to say that when the cell is turgid and turgor pressure is developed then in that case the normal shape of the cell is maintained not only this the turgor pressure also maintains the shape of the soft organs found in the plants okay not only this the turgor pressure is also important for cell elongation it is also important for the growth of the cell the third point is important you can see that due to turgor pressure due to turgor pressure there are many cellular structures such as mitochondria and the plastids and the micro bodies are able to maintain the typical three dimensional structure which is important for the certain physiological functions okay now tp is also important for stomatal movements you know very well opening and the closing of the stomata occur generally stomata open during the day time and close during the night time so this is stomatal movements in the stomatal movements also in the case of the transpiration when we study the transpiration in that case we see that turgor pressure plays a important role that it is important for the stomatal movements it is also important for 
the wilting movements what are wilting movements first of all you must know that what is wilting wilting means curling of the leaves during the day time due to the loss of the water by high transpiration whenever the water becomes deficient in the soil then what happens sometimes we see that the leaves become curled because they have lost the water but in the evening hours when absorption is increased and transpiration is decreased in that condition the leaf again become normal or it 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 becomes to its normal condition so we can say that they are also important for turga pressure is also important for the wilting movements it is also important for the seismonestic movement now you must know that what is the seismonestic movement seismonestic movements are the movements which can be seen in mimosa pudica mimosa pudica is called as the touch me not we have seen that when we touch the touch me not plant then the leaves of that plant what happens they lose the water and because of the losing of the water what happens the leaves of this plant droops down but after some time you will see that these leaves will again these droop the leaves will again gain water and ultimately what will happen they will come back to its normal condition so this all happens because of the tp not only this you know very well that when we saw the seed in the ground then a radical arise and we know very well that radical goes downwards and radical give rise to root so what happens that entry of the radical always occur towards the soil so the power for the entry of the radical in the soil is just because of the turga pressure if turga pressure is there then only the radical will go inside the soil and will form the root so students uh, this was the complete video based on the turga pressure and the wall pressure which will be helpful in various physiological concepts okay so keep watching my videos share and like my videos and if you want to take the screenshot of this video you can take it